morning everybody again a long night of Champions League football behind us again I only saw minimal really really minimal stuff but I saw the highlights of all the games today I managed thanks to waking up way too early but you know if I can watch some highlights it's always worth it um, of course as we will see Ajax won, so I'm wearing my Ajax away jersey from 99. Uh, as I said in the video about this jersey, they were not super successful in that one, but I absolutely love it and the way it looks. So, you know, there are sometimes jerseys that get kind of forgotten because uh, the season was not successful, but they are still great. And that is one of the examples. Well, uh, what was I watching? I was watching the last five minutes of the first half of uh, Valencia Juventus. It seemed to be anyway the game that is probably the most interesting one. Uh, just beforehand, I think that was the one game that I that jumped out. And what I saw is. At first, I saw the chance where I think Kadira uh, hit the bar, and then suddenly there was a penalty call which was given. And at that moment, I saw there was a red card. And I said, Okay, that's interesting. Juventus has a red card. Uh, and then suddenly Pjanic steps up to take the penalty. Ronaldo got a red card? That was my thought process. So um, then I saw, of course, Pjanic converting the penalty. Um, he shot it very hard because honestly, the height was exactly where the goalkeeper's loaded. But if you shoot hard, the goalkeeper has no chance. So I guess uh, he knew what he was doing. But I still, I always like it. Either you go flat or you go high. There was a penalty today that was uh, perfectly executed. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so yeah, Juventus dominated the game at Mestalla but um, couldn't get their chances in and uh, uh, I think there was one by um, Mandzukic which, which was, was the first one that I think might be D. Uh, it should have been at least one or two nothing already uh, early in the game. Um, I think Juventus wasn't that dominant. And then there was a throw in and a little scuffle in the penalty area and suddenly the refs are talking to each other and Ronaldo gets sent off and I think you couldn't even see it on the initial replays I actually uh, went and re-watched the actual scene uh, where the, you barely can see anything you see that there's the Valencia defender is falling down in front of Ronaldo Ronaldo kind of getting upset and probably telling him get up uh, you can kind of see that he is taking his hand to the head of the player and at least attempts pulling the hair. But um, yeah, the Ger well, German referees, so I can. Act I saw the uh, conversation between them then a second time, and you can really tell that yeah, the um, the goal referee. Clearly tells the referee, er, hat, er zieht an den Haaren. You can uh, lip read it if you if you know that this is what the offense was. Uh, it's obvious. And yeah, I guess the referee had no other choice but to send Ronaldo off in that case. But I honestly think that yeah, the German on, on German the TTV they said yeah, it's a tough call but justifiable. I think I've seen worse than what was happening there. Yes, sh yes, uh, you shouldn't get caught doing shit like that. Uh, I will always agree with that. He is a little bit, he makes this pulling motion, but it is not much, honestly. So, yeah, I think a yellow would have done in that case. Um, I was, however, impressed, and this was really by just watching this from the 28th to the 34th minute how Juventus remained all business. Um, Ronaldo was devastated, but uh, the players, his teammates quickly 
got to him and kind of told him, you know, uh, sorry, but um, we want to stay calm. I know you have to leave the pitch. We, we want you here, kind of. Uh, and I think even Pavel Nedved, which honestly is a great thing that he's so involved with Juventus because, I mean, he was the shining star at Juventus in the early 2000s. Um, yes, there would be more. To me, he's not the absolute Juve icon that would be like uh, Del Piero. But if you have someone like that sitting there, uh, you know, someone who has been through all that, uh, I think that can calm even a super superstar like Ronaldo a lot. He was devastated, there's no question about it. But Juventus remained all business. You, uh, and in a way, losing Ronaldo. I know it sounds weird, but it doesn't upset the team dynamic so much because uh, if you lose, I always said, if you lose a player, let it be one of the strikers because then uh, still the formation of your team is intact. You don't have to uh, mess, mess, uh, mess. Why did I say measure? Mess with that. Um, and you just you know go maybe from two strikers to one striker you pull a little a little bit back in these days of false nines and all that kind of stuff uh, it's anyway not a bad thing uh, it's a phenomenon that has been out there for a long time i i think the first time i observed this is when um, at the 1990 uh, round of 16 matchup between uh, germany and the netherlands um, when Föller and reichert were sent off uh, Furla completely not justified, but you know, uh, but having them to reduce to 10 men, um, the Germans only lost the striker, um, and that didn't disrupt their setup so much. The Netherlands lost the most important defensive midfielder, and that uh, ultimately undid them. So, yeah. Therefore, Ronaldo off was not that bad, so they got a penalty, they got a second penalty, again Pjanic, same corner, same shot. Um, that takes some guts, I have to say. I never like when one player has to take two penalties. Um, I just think there should be, uh, there should be a change up, but okay, he made the two. Um, and Juventus were in the lead that they thoroughly deserved. And I think Valencia was only out for defending, and then in the end, uh, Valencia also got a penalty that got saved by Chesney, so 2-0 to Juventus, and that was that. <laughs> it's that easy. Um, the other game, yeah, the uh, Jersey, Jersey match was one of the more boring ones. Interestingly, Valencia played with black socks and you were with white, go all white, all black, but okay, I understand this is the Valencia get up now. I, and the more I see Valencia, the less I like the kids, honestly. This is uh, boring as hell. Really, really boring. I know they're going for the 100 year look, but I have a different picture. When I think about Valencia, I have a different picture in my mind. And it's not that one. They're just too white and there's nothing on there. And then even the crest that added this little piece of color is also not doing anything. So, yeah. And the Juventus. I, the Juventus uh, away, or third kit, however you want to call it, um, I think it looks alright uh, overall, but it doesn't connect with me, honestly. Uh, I think they have been better ones. The other game in that group, which is the last one actually, Group H, is was of course uh, Manchester United and uh, Young Boys Burn. Um, which, yeah, Young Boys is kind of Lusk and Young Boys have tied uh, ties on the fan level, so I uh, was happy to see them actually play um, full stadium and they actually dominated the first half hour. Um, was not much that uh, was showing from Manchester United, but then this is exactly how it often goes when you play as a smaller team, a big team like United. Uh, Pogba takes one shot at goal and it fits right into the corner. Uh, impressive, absolutely, absolutely impressive, I gotta say. So that was uh, 
really beautiful goal. Then they got a completely unjustified penalty. Pogba makes it 2-0 at that moment the uh, game uh, is turned on its head. In a way, and you know there's only one way this is gonna end, and then there was a third goal. I think by Martial and Burn was finished off. Um, as I said, this is exactly how a game goes where there's an underdog missing the chances, and if you have such world-class players like Pogba on your squad, and it's only and they just show up once or twice, you're gonna that's the game right here. So yeah. <laughs> I did not see that guy at all. Sorry. That was a little bit too exciting. So, yeah, Manchester United is pretty. Bern uh, has to go to Juventus next. So, yeah, we have to wait for the Manchester United matchup against um, Juventus, which is probably the big one there. Uh, Manchester United with the white pants looks a little bit more like Manchester United, but with the black bottom. Yeah. I think it's not as bad with the Tottenham kits yesterday. And the burn kits I will uh, review uh, later on. Um, they are somewhat nice, but they are uh, something missing for me. A little bit. There's something missing for me. Let's look at it. So, talked a lot about just one group. Let's go the other groups. Uh, let's take the group E with Bayern playing at Benfica and Ajax playing at home to Ajax. Uh, Ajax, Ajax. Um, I know that people are saying that's not a great matchup at the 7 o'clock spot. For me it is because this was uh, Group D in 94-95, Ajax also played Ike. Um And with Salzburg and Milan in one group. And honestly those were interesting matchups as far as I can remember. Uh, I gave Ajax a little bit of trouble and later on since I'm wearing this one, I think Ike have played against my nose as well. Sorry. Um, I explained it with Ike and Ike won, I want to say. So, there's some history there. But yesterday, yeah, the first half was a little bit dull, and then the second half, Ajax turned, turned it on. Uh, three goals never looked like they are uh, gonna look back. Uh, the interesting thing is that Montella uh, uh, was got out injured, so yeah. But that was that. Uh, Bayern sitting pretty. And Bayern, Benfica, Bayern got the early goal in the first half. It was a beautiful play uh, by Ribery. Um, I think Alaba plays in, and now I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, Lewandowski of course scored. Uh, Benfica, I think, only had a chance as long as Bayern didn't play it. Uh, super serious. That was kind of the impression I got from that game. Uh, and then Renato Sanchez in one really fluid move against his childhood team. Uh, has the attacking move, then plays it out. I think it was again via Ribery and so on, and then finishes off the, uh, the attacking move, making it to nothing. And I think that was again, that was the ball game. So yeah, Bayern and Ajax sit at the moment on top, I think, between Ajax and Benfica. That's gonna be a uh, tough one, honestly. But yeah, we'll see. Uh, I hope Ajax. But I think that Benfica is the stronger team. Just saying it is this. Then the next group that we're gonna look at is uh, Roma, okay, Roma, Real Madrid. Uh, uh, Roma played at Real Madrid. Cannot see. <laughs> There's not much that we can say there. Uh, Real Madrid entirely dominated Roma. And it's exactly how we all expected it. Roma is not on great form at the moment. They are, in that group, the second big name team. But they surely didn't play like it. It was all Real Madrid and one beautiful goal after another. And it was seemingly, um, yesterday we had Messi uh, scoring a wonderful free kick to the uh, uh, day before. And now it was Isco scoring. Uh, just in the other, uh, other corner, but another really great free kick. Uh, make your pick. I think they're, they're almost of equal quality. 
for some reason I still would prefer Messi, but maybe it's difficult. But uh, Isco is at the moment uh, playing out of his mind. Uh, and this Real Madrid team without Ronaldo, it seems, I said it before, they seem liberated. They seem like now Bale can shine. He made his goal after a wonderful pass by Modric. Um, and I forget the third player is the returning player who, who actually uh, scored them in the uh, uh, in, in, in injury time, the last goal. Too little from Roma. Jersey matchup was wonderful though. That's the one thing yeah, I give. And uh, Roma added a nice touch. Of course, I expect Real Madrid to play in their white kids as well. But yeah, Real Madrid looked super comfortable. But as I said yesterday with Liverpool, we so often had it that in the group stage that um, there are teams that play super well and then they don't make it far. I'm not saying that Real Madrid is not going to make it far because with that squad uh, they should. But if I think about it, um, honestly, there are not many teams that can hold their own against Real Madrid at, at the moment. I actually see probably only three teams that I would give at the moment a chance. That's of course Barcelona. I think Juventus can be one of those opponents that completely will give uh, Real Madrid trouble. And I still want to say Bayern Munich at this very moment. But you know, the games need to be played and uh, many changes will come. Uh, the other game in that group was Victoria Pilsen against uh, Jessica Moskva. Um, Pilsen dominated the first half and got two goals. Um, the second one right at one, uh, Jessica was about to do something, but nope. They, it was it were two beautiful goals, especially the second one was a great goal uh, from Pilsen and uh, it looked like uh, the game is done, but Moscow came back, they uh, quickly made the um, cut the lead in half and they seemingly got the equalizer but uh, was not given, I think there was some uh, foul play in the center of the pitch that prevented it and then they got a late penalty and that was the perfect penalty. Uh, high under the bar. If you shoot it high under the bar, especially if you go for the corners, there is no way that anyone is going to save that penalty. Uh, I understand in a penalty shootout it's not that easy, but if you shoot high and under the bar, if you manage to do that, you're going to score. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, I wouldn't mess, I really wouldn't mess around, but you know, I'm not a player, so uh, take that statement with a little, little bit of salt. But I personally wouldn't mess around with a shoe shooting in one of the corners because uh, you have to take care of the goalkeeper there too. And if the goalkeeper guesses the corner, you might be in trouble. So, yeah, that group. I think Tesseka could give Roma some trouble, probably even Pilsen if they play well. Uh, but to be honest, Real Madrid, this, they beat already the supposedly strongest opponent in that group. So, what can it, uh, I, I don't see anything but a comfortable win in this group for Real Madrid. And then uh, I think there will be a slight battle for second place, which ultimately. Roma's experience should see them through. That's how I see it. And that leaves us with our last group. <laughs> and let's talk about the smaller match between Schachter, Donetsk and uh, Hoffenheim. Hoffenheim doesn't sound Champions League. I'm sorry. Hoffenheim, nope. I really don't. I don't get it. Uh, I know they play well and we have, they have the new Miracle coach in uh, Nagelsmann, but yeah, uh, Hoffenheim doesn't sound Champions League, but they played like Champions League. I think Karelic gave them the early lead, and uh, from what I heard, they had actually good control over the game, but then there was a piece of individual brilliance that uh, Schachter got their equalizer was a really really nice goal, I gotta say that. Then uh, Hoffenheim got the 
bleed again at halftime and looked pretty in a way because for most of the time they just uh, could defend their lead. Uh, but yeah, if you don't do much going forward, usually you're gonna get punished and that's exactly what happened in Germany. I think my cone, uh, but it's not, I, as far as I got it, it's not the my cone that we all know from the Inter days. Uh, scored the equalizer late in the game. So yeah, uh, I honestly think that not not winning this game for either team uh, will be their undoing. I think uh, this tie is nice for everyone, like either way at first, but I think both teams will look at this as, as missed opportunities to get three points. Uh, again, I will talk about the kids, especially the Schachter kid is the one that we have a look at. It has a very interesting detail that I'm not sure yet how much I like or dislike it. The thing with Schachter Donetsk is that their home kids, the orange and black stripes, is iconic, but unfortunately, I, I always think it's not the prettiest. You know, it's uh, exactly the opposite. It's not one of the prettiest shirts out there. But yeah, it's unique and therefore uh, has, has a good validity to it. And now we go to the last game, which everyone thought this is gonna be an easy win for Manchester City against Lyon because Manchester City is the best team in Europe at the moment. Um, when I saw the odds for winning a Champions League and Manchester City was top, I never could understand it. Yes, I would say they are among the top five, but top spot, no, I don't see it quite. Maybe they prove me wrong, maybe they, 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 they will win, but at this point, Manchester City, yes, dominated the Premier League, they have an absolutely stacked squad by all valid points, but they have yet to prove that they can actually play with the big boys. Every time that they played the big boys so far, they fell short, and the way they lost to Liverpool last year, uh, it's similar to PSG. I think that the Manchester City and PSG are kind of this, both super rich teams, they just cannot pull it together in a way. Uh, they dominate the leagues, but when it counts in the Champions League, it's not going anywhere. And yeah, maybe knows that Guardiola was also sitting uh, on the bench. They dominate the proceedings. And Lyon scored, I think Fekir scored the first goal, and I think he scored the second goal on the counter attack. And suddenly Lyon is up at halftime 2 0. Uh, Kind of unbelievable, honestly. But yeah, Manchester City may have down dominated the game, but they let go of the defense, I have to say. That's the way it looked. I mean, both goals were uh, highly avoidable. They quickly got their uh, goal in the second half, but from what I could see, I then only saw one more high, that was a short chance by Aguero. Um, and the goal came after. Um, Leon should have made a third. Uh, it could have been 3 nothing Leon. So a big win for Leon. Uh, I think it's also a big shot in the arm for um, French soccer. If you can go to Manchester City with a team that's actually so and so on form and win this game relatively comfortably. Yes, they had to play hard for it, but you know, uh, if it was really that the only chance after the uh, Manchester City made it 1-2, if it's really that the only chance was Ag 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 at stoppage time, I'm sorry, um, that looks comfortable to me. So yeah, that was the big shocker of the night and maybe this is exactly the result City needs to regroup. Uh, to me it's exactly the, res the, the result that proves that Manchester City is not the top team in Europe at the moment. I think there are others and I'm looking totally at Spain for that. I think that both Real Madrid and Barcelona are ahead above the others. Uh, from what I've seen so far this season, those two are clearly the best teams. I will count Juventus as a 1B team. Um, because Juventus plays Juventus style. Uh, nothing fancy, but they have a stacked squad as well. And then 
there you go. I think those are those are the three teams. Um, and recently, uh, the only one that has not won anything of this is Juventus. I mean, if you would count Bayern Munich in that they have at least won in 2013. Juventus hasn't won since 96. So that's I think the only difference between uh, these squads. But yeah, that's how it goes. So yeah, big shocker. Manchester City lose, loses at home to Lyon. Um, I want to see this neutral, uh, but I cannot hide that there's a little bit of a satisfaction there. Um, but again, let's see where Manchester City goes. Uh, maybe they do something. Let me know what you thought about these games that I've been talking about, which ones you watched, whether you uh, disagree with some assessments of mine. Um, or whether you agree and yeah give me a thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these tonight I have another Champions League jersey preview we look at group B tomorrow we have group C and I will try to keep uh, the other uh, groups going until mid next week so uh, we uh, ran through all the Champions League jerseys and then I probably will do Europa League or maybe uh, just uh, jump into the three leagues where I haven't done the second part, which is England, um, I think Germany. I have to see, I think I pretty much covered all German jerseys. There are a few third jerseys, but they are mostly for European competition. So I might cover them in those. I have to look at this. Um, and Spain, I think there are a few that I have to cover. Okay, again, let me know what you think about all these games in Champions League first match day uh, so far in the comments below and I will talk to you soon. Bye!